Welcome back to Man Vs. Meeple, the show where we talk about all things board game related. I am David Waybright, I'm here with Jeremy Salinas, and today we're going to be talking about Barnyard Roundup. It's a bluffing game, mm-hmm. and it's it's the, a bluffing game in the purest sense of the term, I think, right, it Jeremy? It is, because right now in my hand, I have two chickens. Mm, I think you do have two chickens. No, I don't. So, <laughs> Barnyard Roundup is a bluffing game. Uh, it is a two to six player game, uh, ranges from ages seven and up. Yeah, uh, you really, can go pretty young, It's for really sure. geared towards children, however... You can play this with a whole set of people. I yeah, mean, you it, can. This is fun. The, the bluffing, like we said, it's very pure. Yeah. Um, and it does look very childlike. But I can't remember another bluffing game I've played recently. Uh, maybe Wonka Tonka it has some similarities. Mm-hmm. But where you're just simply putting something in front of someone and saying, it's this. It's two chickens. <laughs> right. And then the other guy just has to sit there and go, Mm, I don't think it's two chickens. And then basically that's that's the core mechanic of the game. Yeah. And you get to pick whoever you want. Yeah. Uh, you're just laying things down in front of them. If they pick correctly, they get to, they get to keep the animals. Yeah. If they picked incorrectly, you get to keep the animals. So so the game has a deck of cards. Uh, inside this car this deck of cards, there's six different styles of animals that range from a one to a five, with the chicken being the one and the cow being the five. Right. right? Those are point values that you get if they're in your farm at the end of the game. There's also the pesky crow that is a negative five. Right. So you don't want to be stuck with the crows. Also, there is a set of cards here that are bonuses, depending on who has the most of that animal at the end of the game. So if you have the most chickens, you get an extra five points. And then there is a set bonus card, which is plus ten points for every set of the animals animals that you have within the game. Uh, The last set of components are tokens. The tokens represent three different styles of uh, actions that you can have. There is a robber that allows you to steal from an opponent by guessing what they may or may not have in their hand. You have a little farmer that says, excuse me. Excuse me. He's a very polite farmer. (laughs) Very polite farmer (laughs) that allows you to kind of butt in on someone's guess, if you so wish. And then there's the scarecrow that will chase the um, the, uh, the crows the away. Crows yeah. away. So, uh, David, walk us through a turn. So we each start with six cards. Yeah, you start with six cards, and at the beginning of the game, everyone's going to take one of these tokens mm-hmm. right off the bat. And that's before you put the scarecrow in, because the scarecrow is a unique token. Right. Everyone takes a look what they have, and you can use these at any time during your turn, or the excuse me's on someone else's turn. Right. But everyone has six cards, and say, I'm going to go first. I simply choose any amount of my cards, but they have to be the same card. Mm-hmm. You can't mix and match. And I can take these two and say, Jeremy, those are two cows. And I will say, I agree with you. They are two cows. And they're not two cows. So See he, how that works? So he was right, and he gets the sheep. So they're sheep, so I get to keep them in my farm. Now, if I had done that same thing, mm-hmm. say I'd said, Jeremy, these are two sheep, mm-hmm. and he'd guessed, yes, they are two sheep, he'd get to keep them. Yes. Also, the sort of the, the third alternative is if I'd said there are two cows and he didn't believe me mm-hmm. and they were sheep, then yeah. he gets to keep them. So basically, right. the onus is on the guesser. Right. If they guess correctly, good things happen. Right. They'll usually take the animals unless it's a, a crow. Right. If they guess incorrectly, then the person who is handing the cards over gets to keep the animals. Right. So whoever gets those cards places them in their farm. They mm-hmm. draw back as many cards as they use that turn. Yeah, you draw back up to your hand size, <laughs> and then next person in player order. Yeah. And they don't. you don't necessarily have to ask the next person in player order. You can ask anyone who you want. So if you're playing with a large group, yeah. you know, you can always find that person who's either bad at bluffing or not good at guessing. Right. Um, but the cool thing is the excuse me token can come into play. So if you see another player jumping and, you know, clobbering one person over and over, you can jump in if you think you can call their bluff a little bit better. It's a, the excuse me token is a great way to get a set, too. Say some, pe- some people are see that you have four of the five animals in front of you, and you're trying to get that one chicken. <laughs> right. And so you can kind of jump in there to try to get a set of chickens if they're, you know, making exactly. someone guess about that. So now if we didn't mention, uh, I'm not sure, David, did we mention that when you say a set of cards in your hand, no matter what you say, they have to be the same card? Correct. You can't mix and match. They have to be the same card. They don't have to be what you're saying they are, but they have to be the same card, even with the crows. You can't slip a crow in. If you're handing over three cards and there's a crow in there, all three have to be crows. Right. So uh, what do you think, man? 
I really <laughs> like it. Yeah. It's a fun little game. It's a right. fantastic family game. Right. Um, and I, I like the added layer of these tokens. The burglar token's also a nice, fun addition, uh-huh. uh, in addition to the excuse me token. Because with that, and you can use that as much as you want. If you have a couple burglar tokens, you can use them uh, right in a row. On your turn, in addition to your turn, mm-hmm. you basically flip over the burglar token, look to any player and say pigs yeah. or cows and if they have any pigs or cows yeah. in their hand they have to give them to you and you immediately get them in your farm face up and if they don't if they don't yeah. you have to t- take all their crows take from them all their crows so yeah. you could use that against someone with no crows with a little safety yeah uh, but you'd be really pushing your luck if they had a few yeah and the the thing with crows too they are negative five points for everyone having your farm but for every three that you get you get a new token yeah a bit of a double-edged sword there i right. actually when i've played i don't mind taking the crows because mm-hmm. i just always hope i want to get at least another token and then i'm just crossing my fingers that i'll get the scarecrow to scare the the crows away yeah another cool thing about this game as we said it gears towards all age levels however i have a nine-year-old daughter who doesn't play a whole lot of games mm-hmm. we played this twice in the same day and she, there's some math she played last night with me again she be, did she beat you the she first destroyed time? me <laughs> she destroyed me both times but the great thing is too i'm starting to teach her some game elements at the end of the game i taught her how to add up in values of uh, 10 so we started stacking the 10 points that yep. she had and I started teaching some of the math stuff those to are her some well, of the great edu- things that yeah. board games do for kids for sure right so i like it as well uh, if you guys are interested, go check it out. It is coming out. I'm not sure it was on Kickstarter a couple months yeah. back, and I'm not sure if it's available yet, but it is from Druid City Games. Uh, and again, that's Barnyard Roundup. It is uh, about 10 to 20 minutes. Yeah, it's a short very, game. It's, it's in, it's out. Play. This would be a great filler for a group of adult gamers, but again, a great family game. So go check it out, guys. We are Man vs. Meeple, and we'll catch you again next time. Thanks. Season 1 of Man vs. Meeple is sponsored by TMG Games. Publisher of great games like Yokohama, Guilds of London, and the soon-to-be-released Coliseum.